Hey everybody, so today we're working on my Porsche 912. We're going to be working on the brake. So in a normal driving, you depress the brake and it comes down about that far, about even with the accelerator pedal. And that feels pretty low, I mean it stops okay, but your foot's pretty far down. If you pump it once, you get about another inch out of it. And I've bled this thing a thousand times and it hasn't gotten any better. So we're going to work on that today. So I have a new master cylinder. I've had this thing for probably 20 years. I think when I got this car on the road in high school, really not even on the road, but worked on it, I think I rebuilt the original master. Don't think there was a needed to, but anyway, when I was a mechanic, I got this one to swap it out to hopefully solve that pump up problem. Of course, no, here it is still new in the box. Instead of installing that, I'm going to do a little upgrade. We're going to go to a 68 and up master cylinder, which is a dual circuit master. So with a single circuit master cylinder, you have one feed line and one line going out. Brake fluid comes in here and it goes out one of these. One of these is for the brake light switch. Either way, you lose your brake fluid, you, you lose your brakes. dual circuit master cylinder you have two separate hoses feeding it so if you run out of fluid in one or have a leak lose it out you know out of the wheel cylinder or caliper hose somewhere you only lose half your braking there's one piston or one rod and two separate pistons two circuits so if you lose fluid in one of them you still have half your brakes that work so this is what we're going to upgrade to Let's get started. Okay, so we'll start off by getting some PB Blaster and all this stuff. And then this is the brake light switch. I'll go ahead and unhook that. I don't think that's hot all the time. Let's hope not. I could probably get a meter and check that, but we'll separate them. They should be fine. Worst case, the brake lights come on, right? All right. I may have to do something different there. I'm not positive. So that's the brake light switch. It looks like a 19. So the fluid comes in up here. Make sure you can see it. There's a piece of tubing. The reservoir is up in the luggage in the front trunk there's a little box I'll show you that the two discharges the discharge on this side goes out to the left front over here it goes to a banjo fitting and then comes across and splits line goes to rear and the other one goes to the right front I can, still can't see it but that line comes across and then tees that line goes to rear, this goes to the right front. For right now, let's get a 19 or a 22 and get the brake light switch off. And then we'll start breaking lines and just let this thing drip out. Looks like it's a 22. Normally these brake lines are 11 millimeter, so I have an 11 millimeter flare nut wrench on the other side. Let's hope this doesn't break. Well, actually, we don't care because I'm probably gonna have to re uh, replumb all this. So up here in the front trunk, there is a little compartment officially called the smuggler's compartment. I guess that's you smuggle furs or dope or jewels or whatever. 
you can put it in there. It won't be very big furs because it's not very large. But the brake fluid reservoir is in there, and that thing's we're going to go ahead and that thing's, that thing's going to have to come out. So we'll go ahead and get that out while the fluid's still dripping out here inside the car. I think we're going to have to pull the boot off of the back of the original master cylinder to be able to get it out of the car. Oh, that's a little crusty. Let's spray that with some stuff. Okay. I think we're out of the woods of breaking off. another hand to wrestle this wood floorboard out of here. So that one broke loose. All right. Okay, so this line twisted off. That's a short one, that won't really matter. Um, I can turn this one out, but I probably won't be able to reuse it anyway. Let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. So the master cylinder is free. Let's see if these bolts will come out. Oh. These are studs in the pedal box, so I really don't want to break them off. So I'm going to work these and get them out. Okay, this thing should be ready to pull out of here. So here's old versus new. On the new one, two lines coming in like we talked about, it has an F and an R, so both lines, front and rear, come out this side. This one, this went to the left front, this came out and went everywhere else. And I seem to recall I had a problem with that ceiling, so there's a whole bunch of silicone piled on there. I did read when I was researching this conversion that you would need to shorten the push rod in the car that pushes on the master cylinder. I can see why now. What I don't know is how much. So, looking down inside where it pushes, where the rod actually pushes. Let's take a set of calipers. Looks almost like exactly one inch. like one inch ten thousandths. So I'm going to call that the same. So if we assume that the 
length inside that the push rod goes in is the same. I will measure out here from this flange and then down to this back. You know what, this might be even easier. Let's measure it this way. Five sixty. One seven thirty. So based on that, we'll need to shorten that rod about an inch and a quarter. There's an adjustment in there with threaded rod, so. We'll have to take that out of the car and figure out how to shorten that. So here's the push rod out of the car. It pushes into the master cylinder. We know we need to shorten this by about an inch and a quarter. It has adjustment right here for your free play. But it also has this piece of aluminum on there that seals the boot. So it would seal the new one also, I assume. Um, I'm not really sure what the deal is with this thing. It's not threaded. But it turns, so I don't know if it's like pressed on there. But you turn it, and it just stays. So I need to take 1.2 inches out of this thing somewhere. Um... So I'm, but this, this is gonna be a problem. So this thing may just have to go away and this not be here anymore. So I will let you know what I decide. But I had also thought about just making a new one because this is just threaded on here. A little half clevis deal with a lock nut. So. I have to think about this one a little bit. So I was thinking, let's just see if this thing will come off here. And it does. So it looks like there's a little step machined onto there. That is the new boot. So I guess this would still be used in the newer version. So let me figure out what I want to do right here. This could be some hardened stuff that's pushing in there. So I don't really want to hack this end off. And all these dimensions seem to line up. So I think I'll take the 1.2 inches off of here. And this is just M10 thread. I'll just thread the rest of it up to there. Okay, that should work. So here's the home of the original master cylinder reservoir. I cut the rest of that bracket out of there, but it lived right there. I assumed the later models lived there also, but I guess I was mistaken. And I kind of recall this from working on some 911s. They were like in the 80s. Somehow this reservoir lives up here underneath the hood and the lines run down to the master that way this trunk carpet isn't cut out for that 
and I'm thinking it'd probably make it nasty anyway. So we will try to continue the subterfuge. And I'm gonna make a bracket or use this bracket and place this thing down in here. So I have this reservoir and this bracket. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to make that work, the bracket anyway. I think I can make the reservoir fit and kind of get the hoses pointed down the right way. So I'll work on a way to mount this thing in here. I have our shortened push rod for the master cylinder put in. Got it put back in position. Then I noticed that the uh, brake pedal moves side to side quite a bit. And so does the clutch pedal, moves around a lot. Kind of, you can really see it there. So I think I need to rebush all this stuff. I, apparently there's plastic bushings in there. And I think, you know, 53 years have taken its toll on that. So I'm gonna look for pedal bushing kits, etc. And we will rebush that in maybe a separate video.